Hey guys, uh, we are officially starting chapter four and we're gonna start at objective 130. But before we get started, I wanna remind you how important it is to watch the video entirely, no skipping ahead. If anything, you should be pausing and writing and taking as much time as you need rather than just trying to get through the video. If you're just trying to get through the video, you're most likely not gonna be successful and we'll definitely earn a list off, okay? That being said, go ahead and write down this objective Pause as you need. I'm going to be erasing continuously throughout the, throughout, throughout the video. So if you see that I'm erasing, you have a rewind button. You can go back, pause, and get everything down that you need. In this objective, we are going to be understanding percents and finding percents of a given value. Okay. First, we are going to do a little bit of a review. So, first of all, write this down with me, please. What is a percent? Pause the video and jot down everything that you know, and then come back and return to finish up here with me. Hopefully you said that a percent is a part of a whole. Now, two other words should pop up uh, in your mind when we think a part of a whole. Hopefully those words are a decimal and a fraction. Percents, decimals, and fractions are all the same thing. They just have a different way of, of appearing, right? They just look a little different. So what's unique about a percent is that cent means hundred. So remember, it means for every hundred. So this right here, per means every, right? For each, every. And cent means 100. So this symbol right here literally translates to every 100 or out of 100. The denominator is your 100, okay? Now, when we are finding percents of a given value, it's really important for us to know how to represent percents in terms of a decimal or a fraction. So again, another little bit of review. Let's go ahead and start with percents to fractions. If I gave you, this is gonna be example one, 70%, you should be able to understand that it's 70%. And again, percent means out of 100. So it's going to be this value right here, 70 out of 100, okay? So notice how I literally can just replace percent with out of 100, and it'll be okay, all right? From here, why not? We're already two thirds of the way there. We can go to decimals. One, you can simply divide, 70 divided by or out of 100. This is going to give you 0.7 or 0.70. Remember, 7 tenths or 70 hundredths out of 100. Okay? This is just a review, so I am going a little bit quickly. Example two, let's go ahead and take 25%. Now, 25%, this is a little easier. This is one of, these are one, this is one of those fractions that you should just know. 25% is the same thing as, again, I'm gonna show all my work for this. 25 and percent meaning out of 100. This reduces or simplifies to one fourth. If you divide either of these equivalent fractions, you will get 0.25. So 25% is the same as one fourth, is the same as 0.25 or 25 hundredths, okay? Our third example here, let's go ahead and take 23.4%. Now, the reason why we chose this example is because you notice that there's a decimal. Don't be worried about that, right? Just like any one of these numbers, this decimal or this value that's in front of the percentage sign, it just simply becomes your numerator. 
So we're gonna have 23.4 over 100. When you divide that, you'll notice that dividing by 100 is the same thing as moving the current decimal back uh, to the left two spaces. So you should get 0.234, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and erase again, pause, get this down, and then move forward with me. From these three examples, I'm gonna do two more with you, okay? So example four, um, and, and let's write this back to a quiz because we see these in quizzes quite a bit, so it makes no sense not to relate it to real life. Most of our quizzes are out of five points. So we know that our numerator could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be four, but we always aim for five, right? So if we have zero, or we have five, if we get a zero out of five, we are going to get a zero percent, zero, right? If we get a five out of five, right, and I'm going to say this is out of five, so I'm not saying this is on a number line, I'm saying zero through five, this is one quiz, right? This is one quiz, one whole quiz. If you get a five out of five, you get a 100%, right? So we, if we have a 50%, we know we're not gonna get, we, we didn't get a 10 out of five, that's impossible because the maximum is five. So if we get a 100%, we got the whole quiz right, this will convert to 100 out of 100, and that decimal is one. So if you get anything larger than 100%, for example, 120%, that means you got 120 out of 100. You exceeded the 100. So you have more than a whole. And that's where you would get your 1.2. 100% and, remember your decimal means and, and two tenths or or 20 hundredths, however you would like to see it, okay? Go ahead and also, at this point, write down blue at the top of your page one. So page one, top, right corner, write down blue. Now, we are going to find, finally, percents of values. And we're going to have this conceptual idea first, right? We've got to get down, like, what's really happening before we just use these smart cuts right and left. So, if I asked you to find, so under percents of values, let's do example one. If I said, what is... Remember, you are writing this down with me. Half, half of 12. What is half of 12? Hopefully you're like, oh, well, well that's six in the center. If we have zero here and we have 12 here, halfway through, that's gonna give us six. Now, Different ways you could have done this. In your head, you're probably like, I already knew that, right? I didn't have to do any math. Well, you are doing math. If you know that half of 12 is, is six, you are doing some sort of math in your head. And that math could look like a variety of things. Maybe you drew a number line, right? But one method could have been you divide it, right? From here, you probably didn't see what I was doing earlier. So I'm just going to do this again. But if we have one half, which is a reciprocal of two, and we multiply that to 12, or if I write that as a fraction, 12 over one, one times 12 is 12, two times one is two, 12 divided by two, I would get six again, okay? So we notice we can either divide by two, or we can just multiply. What is one half of 12? One half times 12 gave us six. 
Um, another way we could have looked at it, right? So there's one method. Here's another one, right? Multiplication by the fraction, right? You just multiply one half by twelve. We can also represent one half in different ways, right? We could see this as a decimal. This is one half or 0 0.5 times 12, and, and 0.5 times 12 should also give us 6, okay? Now, I would say that multiplying it by the decimal uh, is the easiest way, but it's not always going to be possible, right? Because we have repeating decimals, so we can't just enter into our calculators. So in example two, we're going to go ahead and find what is one third of 12. So let's check out the multiplication trick because I do think that's the, the fastest way of getting any partial number. If we have one third and we multiply, so of could be multiplication, right? One third of 12. Again, write that as a fraction. We have one times 12 is 12. Three times one is three. 12 divided by 3, we would get 4, right? So here, if I tried to convert one third into a decimal, right, that would be a little bit challenging. Okay. So here, I'm like, eh, one third, it would be 0.3 repeating. There's no way of writing it, so you want to leave it as a fraction. Okay. So if we know how to multiply fractions with values to find the result, and we know how to multiply decimals by the value to find the result. We can do the same thing with percents because we know they're all the same thing. So in example three, if I asked you to find 75% of, let's do 200, what would that be? Now again, visually what that looks like is 75% is the same thing as three-fourths. So it's not going to give you 200, the whole thing, right? It's going to give you three-fourths of 200, okay? Again, try to visualize it. If we had two-fourths or one-half, we would have gotten 100. So it's somewhere around 100 and 200. So when we convert this into a decimal, 0.75, of implies multiplication 200 okay this is going to give you 150 and we can do a quick check we know that the total is 200 and if we put 150 divided by 200 does it give us 0.75 Check it out on your own, and you should be getting that same value. We're going to do four examples, um, two with me, and then two on your own. So go ahead and get these written down. Let's go ahead and write down our major key point. Okay. One we are finding a percent of a value. Convert the percent into a decimal. Unless it's again one third, right? That's a repeating decimal, so we're going to want to leave that as a fraction. But decimals are easiest. And simply multiply the decimal with the value. And that will give you your results. Last thing, 
let's always, oh man, I don't think you guys can see it. So I'm gonna write my last step. I'll write my last step over here. Check. Put your value over the total and see if you've got that same percent. Okay? So walking through example one, 40% of 125. Now, think about it this way. If we had 100%, we would have 125, right? So it's not gonna be bigger than 125. It's actually just a little bit smaller than half of 125, because 50% would be halfway to 125. So following those steps, 40% is 0 0.40 of, means we can multiply, by 125. Go ahead and figure that out and we'll review it in class. 25% of 300. Now remember, 25% is one fourth, right? So it's half of a half of 300. So we can do 0.25 times 300. Again, we're going to check that in class. Go ahead and finish these practice problems on your own. Do not forget to check that third step that I erased, but make sure you're checking your work. And also watch the next video that's also a part of your homework. So pages one through five, including the next video, are for homework.